everyone. Happy Sunday, March 22nd. So today is World Water Day. So we're going to get to that in a second, but I do have Mark's happiness thing that he sent to me yesterday. Mark said this new truck makes him so happy. It is so cool because it has a clock and it is also a bank. It's super cool because it opens up with my very own secret code. I'm just realizing that the truck picture did not print. So Mark, I will print it again and I will show the actual truck tomorrow. So stay tuned, cliffhanger, <laughs> stay tuned for that. All right, so back to World Water Day. You'll remember in yesterday's video, Dylan and I had to film downstairs. A, because Mr. Ziggler was home and he's so loud. And B, because this was a mess. I had tried a couple experiments. The first one was trying to get the volcano to happen in a closed thing of water. It sounds so easy. You add water, a little bit of dish soap, glitter. Didn't have glitter, but we tried other We're things. not a glitter household. All my, glitter, all my glitter's at school. If Mrs. Smith could do a drop off of glitter, that would be. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so we tried various containers. Shaky, shaky, shaker to try to make the volcano work. It did not work. It was massive fails. It was massive fails, yeah. With Mr. Ziggray peanut gallery over here while it's happening. So if any of you actually get that to work, if you are so bored at home that you get the volcano in the water. Send the video. Oh, please send it. I would be thrilled to see how you figured it out. Okay, then Dylan had this brilliant idea. Cue the eye roll. Ma. You know, vinegar and water. It was oh, oil. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. If you're going to tell, if you're going to make fun of me, make sure you get it right. Thank you. Oil and water, you know, they don't like each other. So what if you put water in the container and then oil on the top? And he's like trying to sell it to me. Look, do you see how the oil is just sitting on top of the water? And I'm like, yeah, but what else does it do? It's World Water Day and ain't nothing happening. Well, I will say that. <laughs> Mine worked while yours didn't. That is technically true. <laughs> if you have me there. So we have moved on to our third. Now I told you we don't do rehearsals. Like this is all one take. You're welcome. Tickets are free. But you already used that joke. You can't keep reusing jokes. <sighs> Sorry for those of you at home offended with duplicate jokes. But this is going to be a long haul. <laughs> Some are going to come back around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, so we have come up with a new water experiment that we're going to do, but Dylan is actually in charge of it. And this one you can do at home. So when I'm going to hand the camera, I'm going to take it and I'm going to film Dylan and he's going to go over what you need as your supplies and then how to do it. So Dylan. Okay, pass on the camera. Come on over. Okay, are you rotating? We're rotating. This is the most exercise I've done. If you want to, you want to flip on the other side oh, of the counter. Okay, that's fine. That way you get the entire... You know, Dylan's like the producer and the director and the I'm cameraman. All, I'm all of it. You I'm, are. I'm, I'm tech support. I'm everything. That's okay. true. So this is a cool little experiment that we can do that shows the power of water. So the first thing you need to do is just grab a cup. So we'll go in here. We'll grab one. Let's use the clear one. Okay. My favorite glass? Her favorite glass. Funny story, when I was younger, we used to have a plate that she made back when she was a kid, like in the 70s, and it was part of our uh, Christmas dishware. And it was a home video of me lifting up the plate on camera, and as I hold it, it drops to the floor, her precious plate. So yes. I promise not to let that happen uh, with this. Well, that plate was plastic. And if we think of it, I'll <laughs> dig it out of the cabinet and we'll show it on it's a future a video. It's a classic. But this is my very favorite <laughs> glass, Elyria <laughs> Catholic. Of all of our glass glasses, you choose that well, one. You have two, don't you? I do. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need the glass. And then we also need cardboard. Now, we've been doing Amazon orders like crazy, so we have a ton in the garage. But Grab a piece of cardboard and cut it out just to be a little bit larger than the rim of the glass. That way when it's on top, it fits like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is after you have both your cup and your cardboard, we're gonna fill it up. Now you want the water to be pretty much to the top of the 
glass. So I would recommend doing it over a sink because... <laughs> Just, because just this may not work. It may not work. <laughs> uh, it worked. We, when we were testing, it did work. Um, but, you know, it's live TV, everyone. What are you going to do? Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the cardboard on top. So we are over to sink. We have the cardboard on top. We're going to push it down. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. Invert, if you will. In, there's a word. Thank you. Invert. Just science word of the day. Okay. And after we flip it over, we're going to hold it and then let <gasps> go. Yay! Look at that. Is it a vacuum seal? It is that is what it made? It is a vacuum seal. The pressure inside the cup is what holds the cardboard to it. Isn't that awesome? So try this at home. You need water, a cup, and cardboard. Super easy. Live on the wild side and get out mom's china. <laughs> The most expensive <laughs> things that you have. Your Waterford you crystal use. glasses. <laughs> those like those family heirlooms. That get you those out. Get those out. I mean, what what could possibly go wrong? Oh, all right, Dylan, tell them to stay tuned for the next chapter. I think we're chapter five. I think we are. Whatever chapter we're on, Mrs. Zegger is going to read that next. All right. Well, luckily I have my Christmas dishes nearby so I can show you the family heirloom that is the plate that Dylan The most dropped. valuable thing you'll most ever valuable. see. Now, don't judge me. I was six. So, so I was you were, age. yeah, their age. Okay. And I distinctly remember thinking, how do I show ornaments on a Christmas tree? I, I could not wrap my brain around it. Now, if you know me now, I'm pretty good at crafts. I am not good at drawing, like painting anything by hand. If you wanted me to draw a, a, a self-portrait, self or... <laughs> that ain't going to happen. It would still be a stick figure. So this... It started way back then. So as you look at it, remember, I couldn't figure out how to put the ornaments on the trees, but I wanted to represent the Christmas ornament balls. You're doing a whole lead in for this. This is going to be a massive letdown. <laughs> and the candy canes. And apparently the candy canes also have ornaments on them as well. And notice the fireplace in the bottom. I mean, that's a piece I mean, of, it's, it that's, really that's a is, treasure when you think about it. But I'll it. tell you what. So this was from 1979. <laughs> you you were born has, in, you were born in, you were born in 53. Whatever. So it has stayed I have had this plate ever since then. It goes in the dishwasher, whatever the art teachers were doing, it probably had asbestos or something in it, probably something awful, but how cool that I still have it. So, all right. So everyone go to Michaels, grab a plate and send us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't go to Michaels. You are home with your family. Okay. Chapter Five? Okay, you'll remember the end of chapter four. They both were down with the pteranodon, and they look up on the hill, and there's a huge dinosaur. Chapter five. Gold in the grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh, man, whispered Jack. We are in a long time ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one. Two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people, whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a triceratops. He read the caption. The triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see him, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. 
He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stepped off the ladder, the Pteranodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew him a kiss. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack. And he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shh, Jack put his finger to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out of the triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice. But the Triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away, down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook. Nice. All right, so here's a picture, and then I'll read that page. Very nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion, a gold medallion. Same picture, but look in Jack's hand. You'll see it has an M on it. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. And that's the end of chapter five. Oh, Dylan has something to add. Well, you know, since we're getting through, um, we're getting to meet more dinosaurs in the book, what if we have the kiddos email us their favorite dinosaurs oh. and we can read them on the air and see what the most popular dinosaurs are in KA and KB. Well, that's a fun idea, Dylan. Thank you. I have those sometimes. And I haven't heard from Milo, who is the dinosaur expert in KB. If anybody is friends with Milo, mommy to mommy, you know, or if the kids know how to reach him, please reach him, have him watch these because we need dinosaur info we do. input. We do, especially because the entire book is based on dinosaurs. This is what I'm saying. All right. So yes, great idea. If you have a favorite dinosaur, send it to me and then we'll talk about those tomorrow. All right. Have a great Sunday. Bye.